We've got this Z45 man lift we bought a few months ago. Uh, the uh, unit is probably a mid 90s uh, unit. There's no serial number. I can't find the serial number on it, so uh, I don't know how old it is. Um, when we bought it, nothing was working on it. Um, no batteries. So uh, we're going to uh, uh, do a complete uh, rewire on it. On it, the uh, we got it uh, working on the hydraulic parts, um, so now, uh, but the uh, the electrical parts are all absolute garbage. Uh, they've been butchered so badly and corroded and so on. The uh, control box for the boom, you see, is uh, terrible, terrible. We have uh, a box full of circuit boards that I took out. how badly badly corroded they all are so it's not none of this is salvageable it's all it's all garbage so we're going to start over again and uh, put all new uh, all new stuff in it all new controllers so uh, and we're going to do a complete rewire the existing wires here um we priced those out and just the wire alone for 25 conductor wire 18 gauge wire uh, they want uh, four hundred dollars a roll for it and it takes 88 feet uh, each of these are 88 feet long so it's two two rolls 100 foot long and uh, it's going to be about uh, 800 dollars just for those wires so i'm going to try and reuse these wires um, the outer covering is pretty hard uh, but the inside is not too bad there's a few areas where the wires chafed through um, right in here for example And we can see where the uh, previous owners have split the uh, outer covering just to try and repair the chafing and so on. Um, the control box here is just as bad as the other ones. The circuit boards are... Uh, oh, darn it. Circuit boards are all burnt up. Uh, underneath um, diodes are burnt out and shorted and so on um, You know wires hanging off all over the place. No idea what the uh, relays here do for example um, It's all been butchered so badly that it's, it's none of this is salvageable But the good part is the hydraulics um, They all work. Um, I don't see any problems with the uh, with the hydraulic blocks The other hydraulic block is there other than the wiring the hydraulic parts are just fine. Other problems with the man lift that we're going to address are the cylinders here. Sorry, that cylinder um, is leaking at the, to the top seal of the uh, ram seal. So we'll uh, replace that ram seal. And also the other problem is with this final drive right here. The, uh, this drive has a grinding noise, like grinding noise in operation. Uh, so uh, we'll take, gonna take that apart and see what the problem is inside there. But the, uh, the job for today is we're going to lower the camera right there, and we're going to we're going to rewire this mess here. So all the high amperage wire, we're going to replace all those connectors, and where the two electric solenoids are here. Uh, we're going to replace those. So here's the new boxes. The uh, That box here, control box, the lower control box. That box is still good, the box itself. Um, so we're going to keep that one. And we're going to put that electric box up here to replace this electric box. Because this electric box is uh, corroded out on the bottom. It's rusted right through. So we're going to trash that one. And we're going to use that electric box here. And we're going to use this new electric box that we made up here. Uh, we're going to mount that onto there and we're going to use this electric box um, for the lower part. Um, we made this box a little bit larger for the lower part because we're going to swap over um, instead of using the diodes and circuit boards that are in this lower uh, control box we're going to swap over to use all relays and I think this will make it a heck of a lot easier to troubleshoot 
uh, for potential problems. Um, so we'll see how, uh, how that works out. And this panel here, I made that up yesterday and painted up so the paint's a little bit tacky still. Uh, this panel is going to go uh, down here for the um, solenoids right in there. That mess there, we're going to replace all that. Okay, so that's the task for, uh, for today. We'll see how far we get. Um, other wiring over here we need to address. Things like this all over the place. So there you go. We will uh
Alright, so these are going to be insulators that are going to go in like so. Uh oh, we're a bit tight. Okay, so the uh, high pressure fuse is going to go in between here, and that ins uh, the plastic insulates it from either side, so that acts as a insulating bar. That looks good though. I like it. It'll work fine. I wish I paint that. It'd be nice if that was a different color, um, like a red color or something, but that's all I've got is the clear. So that'll work. Right, we have the uh, high amp compartment here all cleaned up. This is the uh, wire that goes to the lower control box. I just snipped off the end. There's plenty of slack there, so we're good on that. And all the high amperage wires are all taken off and it's wiped out. We have a hydraulic leak somewhere over here. I believe it's on this part right here, but I can't really tell. It's really hard to tell where the leak is coming from. Oh, looks a hell of a lot better now with all that uh, spaghetti mess of wire there. Okay, so now we're going to set up. Now we're going to set up this plate with all the uh, stuff that's going to be mounted on it. The paint is still a little tiny bit uh, tacky yet. Uh, this part here is not painted. This is where I'm going to put all the main negatives on that part. Okay, so the switch uh, main, I'm going to add this main power switch in so I don't have to disconnect. And I've got, uh, it's just a regular marine switch. I've got the one battery pack, second battery pack, or both together. So that makes it a lot easier for uh, uh, turning the power off at the end of the day. And we have our terminal strips with little labels. For the numbers, is that going to fit? Yes it is. Yep, it's going to fit. Oh, for Christ's sake. Yeah, that one's ringing. One place. We've got these little jumpers that go in between the uh, barrier strip to uh, common up all the negatives. Um, on the bottom part of the uh, man left here, we've got uh, uh, probably nine negatives to con common up uh, for the solenoids and for the uh, uh, contactors and things like that. So I'm just going to start right. Put that one in first. So that makes it nice and neat and tidy to have them all common. A bit tedious installing all these little bits. Um, on the uh, machine itself, um, the original factory wiring was 18 gauge. Well, it's hardly hard to tell. It could be 18 or it could be 20 gauge. Um, it's larger than 22. Uh, which is too bad because a 22 gauge is uh, uh, in multi-conductor cable for signal is uh, shoot is uh, quite common but 18 gauge is not quite as common hence why it was much more expensive um, so we're going to try and reuse the multi-conductor cable Eighteen or a twenty twenty gauge is what we're going to use. We're going to use eighteen for uh, reconnecting all these, so that should be uh, okay for the small amount of amperage that the hydraulic solenoids use. Okay. 
Okay, now you get the idea. And that goes there. I'm sure you can water these little screws up. Oh, all these little uh, little screws, I uh, threaded the aluminum plate. Yeah, then I don't have to worry about putting nuts on the back of them. It makes a much neater installation having that uh, threaded. So again, threading all these holes was a bit time consuming. But it makes a much, uh, much neater installation overall, so I'm happy with that. Okay, two more. Okay, so these are uh, um, wire tie holders. So I had intended to put two here, but um, not enough room. So I messed up that. Might be enough room to get that in there. I'll have to do it a different way. But it is big enough here. So I'll put these washers behind it. A lot of planning goes into uh, these kind of things, yeah. Then again, I guess uh, for this type of thing, I'm actually designing a project as if I was manufacturing it. And quite frankly, I like this idea a lot better than what the manufacturer originally did. But I guess it'd be too time consuming for them and time is money when they're making equipment. So I can afford to do these kind of things. This is just for my own use, not for anybody else. Okay. So next, I'm gonna put the uh, master switch on here. Okay, so that's supposed to go through like that. Okay, now this hole here, I've got this wire uh, wire grommet, and that's for that uh, signal wire to go through, just so it supports it a little better than just have it hanging looser like it was in factory. Well, actually we don't know if it was hanging loose in factory because uh, this thing's been butchered so badly. Oh, something like that. Yeah. 
to uh, straighten everything up. Oh yes, the next uh, main item are here. These are going to be for the fuse. Let me show you what's going to happen with that. This is the old fuse that came out of it. So it's going to be, uh, I've got two more of these, uh, of these type of fuses. That one is not even any markings on it anymore. It's been so badly butchered up. Um, a factory manual said there's supposed to be a, it's all oily. There's supposed to be a 100 amp fuse on the small hydraulic pump and a 300 amp on the large hydraulic pump. So uh, you saw right at the beginning, um, the video showed the, uh, had the, the one fuse on both. So I have no idea what this rating is because you can't read any of the markings anymore. And you see how badly butchered it up it is. So it'll be the same type of fuse, but uh, one will be a 100 amp, one will be a 300 amp. And uh, I'll show you how we got the setup for the fuse holder. I'm quite happy with how this uh, worked out. So these are uh, little plastic insulators that made on the water jet. I'll tap those in with a plastic hammer. All right. All right. Then uh, on uh, again, that's just to insulate the bolt. The bolt will go through like so, and then the uh, fuse holder, of course, go, or fuse goes on like so. Yeah. So we're going to go like uh, that's painted on one side. Uh, we need this. Uh, these are uh, washers. I just painted one side of the washers, a uh, metal washer, then the plastic to insulate it, and then it'll go through like so. With this will go. Uh, um, uh, it'll have to go through two washers, won't it? Yeah, so I'll need a second washer underneath there. Uh, okay, I'm only going to put one washer on for the time being. Well. Okay, and then the other side, we have a plastic insulator, and another washer, and then we have the nut. Gee, it's awful long, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, the next size smaller is going to be too short. Well, anyway, so that'll be quite neat and tidy that, and uh, very safe. So there's no chance that the uh, fuse can short out. Oh shoot, I forgot. Ah. This bar is going across to um, make these common. And I forgot to put that on the back. I've got to take these off, yeah, off anyway, but I'm going to mock everything up so I know that everything fits. Shoot, I didn't think of that a moment. that. This is just a common uh, common bus bar. I've made this out of aluminum. Of course it should be copper or brass, but I don't have any copper and brass, so I'll have to use aluminum. So it'll be a good enough conductor. Yeah, so that makes it a nice, uh, the common uh, um, high amperage lead, something like, oh this is pretty dirty. And we got another shirt in here. There we go. There's a piece of garbage just to let you know how it's going to go on like that and bolt it on. Uh, of course, I'm going to make up new ones to get the idea. So, so the fuse goes in like that. Uh, the new fuses are two inch. This is two and a half inch between centers. The new fuses are two inch. All right. 
Um, this uh, was a insulated cover to go over that, but because of the thickness, uh, there's not enough um, of the uh, thread left on the strain relief, so that doesn't go on now. So that's too bad that I can't use that. But that's okay, it's not really necessary. It's not absolutely necessary to have that one. Okay, now these holes here, these are for the, uh, the high amperage uh, solenoids here. So they're going to go in like that, and then between the fuse it's going to go in like that.
Oh shit. That's not supposed to be 90, it's supposed to be at an angle like that. Hell. Oh, fuck that, that, didn't I? Okay, well, we'll do it again. Shoot. Hell. Okay, we'll do the other piece first because I don't know what the angle is for sure going to be. Okay, that goes uh, up.
we have to bend that one so it fits in. This one, I don't have the height correct. Yeah, I got it wrong. Yeah, I got it quite a bit wrong. Probably half an inch out. And that angle there now. I want it to be something like that. getting there. So we want that to be in an angle like that with a quarter inch uh, reveal all around the sides. That was the plan anyway. So I've got this end too long as well. I don't know how to manage that. Got that end too long. So we're going to bend it in and then after we bend it we'll measure how much we have to take off the bottom. So it's going to be bent uh, that way. Okay, so over here. Okay, give that a shot and we'll see. Alright. Reveal about correct. Okay, so now we have to mark the inside how much I gotta cut off. At least it's not too short. It's nice that it's too long. It would be nice that it was the right size.
Okay, now let's put it all together and see how it works. So the cover goes over like so. Holes all lined up. Like so. Okay. That'll do. That'll do just fine. Okay, it's very strong too, huh? It's not going 